Bonjour. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new here, my name is Erin. If you are returning, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on another video. Today we're going to be getting into my wrap up for February, all the books I read, which I had an okay month. I had a couple really great books I read, a couple, quite a few that I did not like as well, but I did not finish my whole TBR. We'll get into all the nitty gritty details. I will tell you everything that I read and everything that I thought I was going to read and didn't. But anyways, you guys, if you enjoy videos about books, reading, this is definitely the place for you. I do a couple videos like this a month. I also do movie reviews, reviews, uh, or first-time reactions to movies as well. And, of course, makeup videos as well. As you can see, I have my beautiful pink and purple look today. So if you enjoy any of those topics, it's just kind of an all-encompassing type of channel. You know, we do different things on here, and we, we have a good time. So think about subscribing to the channel. Hit that subscribe button down below. And if you like this video by the end, then give me a thumbs up. So, reading into reading. What have we been reading lately? I will let you guys know what I've read lately. All right, so for my February this. spread in my reading journal, I'm loving having these checkups as well. I am really enjoying this journaling process I'm going through and just, I'm just really, really loving the, the journaling aspect of the reading that I'm incorporating this year. I've always loved writing and journals and just, you know, list and things like that. And I've always loved, um, you know, just keeping a record of what I've read, but I've never really been consistent with it and or had a reading journal. So I'm doing this this year and it's just been so much fun. So my theme for the month of February was obviously the Chronicles of Narnia. So as you can see, I have quite a few little things here, visuals. I actually looked up some different um, art tutorials on how to make it look like Narnia. So the lampstand, I looked up a video on YouTube, just gonna help me draw it. Then I just posted a couple of the little books here, mini pictures, and I drew, or I, I didn't draw that, I, I printed that off as well. But as you can see, it has that Narnia theme, and I, just, I love this spread. My last spread, I did Harry Potter for January, which you can probably see it in my last video, or let me just flip to it. And I did it as two pages. So I really, really loved this spread as well I really love how it came out but I decided to go with one page because I realized I don't have that many pages in this journal and I'm kind of one of those people that kind of will you know people say they use multiple journals a year for the reading journals and I'm just kind of one of those people I'm like I want it to be all in one journal I don't know if I'm gonna change my mind through the year but I already noticed that I'm quite out of pages so let me stop talking so much about the journal let's actually look at what's on the journal so for February I had a TBR of one, two, three, four nine books, which is quite ambitious, especially because uh, February is a shorter month, and I was quite busy in February with a lot of different things, so we'll get into it. Um, I started off with a lot less on my TBR, but then as the month went on, I started adding things to it, and so I'll tell you guys what I actually read of that, but I had The Diary of Maddie Spencer, which would have been a reread. I did not end up reading that one, Half Sick of Shadows, which is a book that I have on my shelf, and I got it from Book of the Month, The Kissing Game, which I got from the library, How High We Go in the Dark, another one I own, The Handmaid's Tale, another library pick, Psycho, another library pick, 12 Years a Slave, Fushigi Yugi, which is a manga, and then Where the Heart Is. So I ended up reading some of those and not all of them. So for February, I kind of lost track of my thing here, but I read pretty much almost every day. I'll have to say probably, especially like within the last week or so, I haven't read every day. So I'll kind of estimate, probably read about maybe within the past seven days, maybe four of those seven. So didn't do like January where I read every single day, but fairly close. Um, I didn't listen. I think the reason why I read every single day in January is because I was listening to an audiobook. I was pretty consistent. When I finished one audiobook, I would just go ahead and start another one. So for February, I'm going to just go ahead and circle a couple of random days throughout the last week. And that's still really good. Like, not every single day that I read, but really, really darn near close. Um, so then I have at the bottom the books that I did read, which I need to read, add my most recent one. And so, in total, I read six books for the month of February. Not as much, definitely not as much as I read in January. In January, I literally read 16 books. So, a huge jump there. But, again, like I said, a lot busier month. Uh, quite a tiring month as well. Even though we did have a short break in February from uh, 
work and I'm a, a teacher for anyone that's new and I just I just didn't read as much this month so maybe I was burnt out from reading so much in January that this month it just wasn't happening so six in total but let's go ahead and hop into the books okay, that I actually starting read. off we're gonna just go in chronological order of when I read these I first read Survive the Night by Riley Sager this one was one that bled over from January actually I finished this one um February the 3rd so very early on in the month and I actually listened to this one on audiobook I got the audiobook from Libby which is the library app so you can, the library app Libby is what it's called if you have a library card you can go on there check out audiobooks and this is what I did for this particular book um, this one is a story about this girl named Charlie Jordan who is ready to leave her college campus after her best friend is killed by the campus killer so she finds a ride with a stranger from her school only issue is that Josh it may be the man behind the uh, Josh the one who is driving her may be the one that is behind these killings and so for this one I I had to start off by saying I I just found the characters in this one to be ridiculous and the plot to be quite ridiculous as well so this is one that was rated a little bit lower for me this month um this is my first introduction to Riley Sager and um maybe not the best idea to watch reviews of books that you've never read the author of but from a couple of my people that I really enjoy here on YouTube that do booktube and book reviews and things there's mixed thoughts on Riley Sager but this is my first book from this author and for me it just was not the best introduction because I just didn't really vibe with this book I gave it a two out of five stars or in my personal rating which I do letter grades a play off me being a teacher I gave it a D plus which would be about two stars um Again, this book, I just felt like the main character was someone that was just so un, like, relatable in the sense that she just was making every single wrong choice. I feel like, especially if you're friend, like her friend just got killed by the campus killer and she's getting in the car with a stranger that she's never met and never seen around campus and hitching a ride with this person to go back home. Strange, strange choice. Um, also... Like, even though it was engaging, like, I was really interested to see where it was going. It was a very easy audio listen. I did enjoy the audiobook. I'll give it that. The narration was pretty, pretty solid, although sometimes there were some annoying parts with the narration. I just felt like the way that the voices were was not really differentiated that well. But anyways, um, I give the narration about, like, a three-star and engaging this I would say maybe about a four but everything else is fairly low especially the plot like who in their right mind would get in the car with a stranger especially a woman alone at night and he has suspicious behavior before you can get in the car with him none of those things are ringing a bell for me so I just feel like Charlie our main character she just really made a lot of dumb decisions and I just don't know how this character was even written so for me it just didn't do it for me at all um yeah so <laughs> yeah no the next book okay. i read actually shot up higher with my rating and that is psycho by robert blatch this one is a classic of course this is the novel which the psycho movie is based on which came out in 19 i want to say 60 1962 or something like that something in that that ain't um this book actually came out in 1959 um very very short book only 208 pages and of course this is a horror novel so this is about a young woman named mary crane who goes to the bait motel at one stormy night after she herself um commits a crime and she has stolen some money from her job forty thousand dollars to be precise which was quite a lot of money back in this time she's running away to be with her lover but she ends up at the bates motel and this motel is run by norman bates and his mother and um of course things ensue horror ensues and if you've ever i mean cycles a really 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 old movie as well as a really really old book um so i guess i don't know if this will be a spoiler but of course this is the story of norman bates i feel like everybody in most of the world knows who Norman Bates is maybe not most of the world but definitely like in United States or um U.S. like pop culture um and of course he's the killer in this story so we're basically following him and this woman and what happens after she is killed and how um they're trying to find her her sister and her boyfriend uh I really enjoyed this I also listened to this one audiobook but I also have the physical copy as well I got the physical copy from my local library I love going to my local library and getting books best in the world or best thing to do again like I said a very very short book 
and I would like to own this now because I've really enjoyed this. I gave this a five star or an A plus rating. I just really love the horror aspect of it. I'm a huge horror buff. I like horror movies, horror books. Um, I found this to be quite scary as well as iconic and I just love seeing the origin of one of my favorite older movies in Psycho. Uh, the writing was really good, the plot was really solid, and I did really enjoy the narration in the audiobook since I listened to it mostly on audiobook and only read part of it as a physical. So yeah, very five enjoyable star, classic first star. story. Had a first five star read for uh, February, but it would not be my last because the next book on this list here is 12 Years a Slave. And so this is one of two nonfiction books I read this month. Who would have thought after only reading two nonfiction books the whole last year, 2021, I'm already at three now because I have another one on here. Um, three now and it's just February. I'm the you know the discovery of listening to them on audiobook has really been a lifesaver for me because I can get through them a lot more and this book in particular 12 Years a Slave really reads almost like a novel even though it is a true story of a man named Sol Solomon Northup who was a citizen of New York he was kidnapped in Washington in um, 1841 and stayed in slavery for 12 years until 1853 when he was um, you know able to escape by the help of some other people um, and he st was a slave for 12 years on a cotton plantation in Louisiana this one has also been made into a movie I have not seen the movie to this but I definitely want to watch this because this was my other five star for the month I really 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 enjoyed this um, it was, of course, not something that was like, oh my gosh, yay, like flowers and joy. It was quite a sad story, obviously, a real life event of a man that went through something that was very much um, such a heart wrenching story, especially being as he was separated from his family and children for 12 years and put into a horrible institution, a horrible, um, you know, blight on the whole country. Uh, put into the system of slavery even though he was a free man so just the story of his bondage and his struggle to accept the fact that he was kidnapped and basically given this new identity he wasn't even allowed to say this is my name this is who I am this is where I'm from I have a family he was so afraid of the consequences of what he would suffer if he even tried to say anything um, and so just reading his whole journey and he actually wrote this book as well um, it was very much something that was enlightening um, and very much I, I like I didn't, I didn't even know this sort of thing happened which shows how much I know um, I didn't even know people were kidnapped and put into slavery that were free like obviously this is something that I feel like should be um, like known and read about along. I also yeah, so. read Between the World and Me by Tanishi Coates Taneshi Coates. I'm so sorry. I'm missing that name, but this one was also another nonfiction book. Um, this one will be considered as like a memoir or an essay. And this one was also also from a black author. I figured um, with it being Black History Month, of course, let's read some from some black authors. And um, this was my second pick here. I got this one also um, from the Libby app and it was um, not too, I, the Libby app. So it was an audio book. And um, it wasn't too long of a listen because I finished 12 Years a Slave on February 12th and I finished this one February 15th. So I finished this one very quickly. The physical copy has 152 pages apparently, and um, but I listened to it on audiobook. For this one, um, and of course the Libby app, if you guys don't know, it has um, ebooks and audiobooks. I just tend to get the audiobooks because that's what I'm mainly looking for. But this one in particular, I really, really liked. I didn't give it a five stars, um, but I love this one as well. This one is basically a uh, profound read that discusses many issues in the U.S. revolving around race um, through the Arthur's experience and worldview. It's written as a letter to his son, and it's a thought-provoking look at our concept of race and the damage it has done to black bodies or black people in general so um i think three words i could say about this one was it's the prose the way it was written is really really well written it's very almost lyrical in a sense very very well written it has you thinking so my second word would be 
thinking and the third word would be bodies because that was a concept in this book the thought of black bodies and how that um has been affected with the system that we have in the united states um I give this one again an A minus or 4.5 stars. Um, I really, really enjoyed this one again. This is a very high rating for me, and it was an amazing read. It had a lot of thought provoking ideals and concepts, and I just really enjoyed um, the listening to the thoughts of this author. And it was read by him as well, so I really enjoyed that as well because you really actually feel like he's just reading you his thoughts and telling you his story. So I really enjoyed it. I think the reason why I didn't get a five star for me, even though I really enjoyed it, were um, just a few things in it that I didn't necessarily, um, not vibe with or understand necessarily being as he's a black man, his point of view definitely obviously would differ from a black woman. But overall, I think that this was a very interesting read. And I think it should definitely be something that almost everybody reads. Like, should it be required reading? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. So I have to do at least okay. one romance um, novel as it was February and Valentine's Day. I mean, we got to stay on theme here. So I read The Kissing Game by Marie Harty, Harte, and um, this is one I just picked up from the library. And this is another one that I gave uh, two stars, so a D plus. I just felt like okay. So let me just first off. Um, get into the details released in 2022 320 pages so not super short it wasn't a boring book it definitely was entertaining as i was going through it and again i picked this up because it's february romance obviously but for this one in particular the summary of this one is we're following renee and axel um renee and axel they're interested in each other but axel hasn't made a move yet and um, renee is a diehard romantic and wants axel but this tall german man is a bit of an iceberg iceberg and axel just might lose his chance with renee but he finally makes his move with a little challenge to him her basically saying that she, he bets that she can't resist a kiss with him and so again interesting premise and whatnot um but i just feel like here's my main thing with this i didn't feel like the characters were that interesting and or that uh like i couldn't really get into them not much to say with this one honestly it's kind of just a mediocre ish romance book it's something that you can kind of just get lost in and read and it's almost like how you know how you put on movies some movies you can just put in the background and then do, do something else this is that in book form you know it's like something that's kind of just like a fluff read and not to say that it's a bad book not at all it's just it wasn't it didn't do much for me it didn't do much for me and also had a lot of elements of racism in it because okay we're dealing with a black woman and a white man in this and within this town there's a lot of racist like white supremacist uh groups and characters in this which i don't know if was necessarily um necessary within this story but yeah that's my thought on that two and stars overall. the last book i finished oh my goodness I started this in january i wanted to finish this in january but ended up not this was actually my january uh book of the month pick that i picked and i definitely wanted to start this year challenged myself to actually reading more of the book of the month books i love getting them it's like a christmas present every month but you actually have to read them so i picked this one up and um for my january book and that's because this was one of the most interesting one for me uh, january i didn't find the books that 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 interesting just to be honest which is something that might happen with a subscription box you can always substitute the books though or skip the month with the book of the month which is what i really like about this subscription but i went ahead and picked this one up because this one did sound the most interesting to me and also it's a black arthur and i think this is her i want to say this is her debut debut novel so i definitely yeah this is her first novel so i definitely wanted to give this book a chance um i'm always here for you know the black arthurs and so i picked this one up i got into it i was enjoying it but it just really started to slow down for me about the halfway point so this book is following two characters of um byron and benny who are brother and sister and they're kind of estranged the whole family has been estranged but then the mother dies and she leaves behind a, a voice recording 
um, for them to listen to of some things that she wants to say to them as well as kind of like a, a strange inheritance um, as well as some family secrets so that's basically like a very quick terrible description sorry I'm not really good at summarizing but getting into this one <coughs> first of all this is a chunky book and I do like the way this one is set up because the chapters are really short so it makes you feel like you're reading like super fast because like their chapters are like very very short so for example you got this is the beginning and then like you flip one two and, and there's another chapter so that was one thing I did enjoy but I'm not a huge contemporary reader so, like I would categorize this as like a contemporary fiction I'm not a huge contemporary fiction just straight up contemporary fiction reader I like my fantasy I like my romance I like um, you know horror I love you know even throw me some sci-fi or dystopian those are my wheelhouses and I love a historical uh, romance I'm not a very big contemporary fiction reader just point blank period so that was already one thing against it and then like I said I, it started off very interesting but about the midway point I was just getting so bored I was so bored and that's like a cardinal sin you can have a book that's like ridiculous like survive the night totally ridiculous but it was engaging I could get through it I was interested to see what was going to happen even though I kept saying this is really dumb that this woman would get in the car with a stranger this I was just like where is this I, I was so bored y'all and it did have some really sad parts in it it has some really heart touching parts in it it just was not grabbing me maybe I just was burnt out at this point like I said I read a lot of books in January and this month was not as reedy for me that's not a word but you get what I'm saying I did finish this one on the 25th so just two days ago and I'm sad to say I, I really should have just DNF this book honestly but I have an issue with DNFing I'm trying to work on it I, I was very close to doing so but I really did want to know the family secret and get to like the the big reveal at the end so what I did this is kind of cheating I did already finish about maybe 60% of the book so I kind of just skipped a little bit and then like just picked up from here and I feel like I didn't miss much and that should tell you something uh, I know this this one actually I feel like this is going to be the unpopular opinion for this video because this actually has a 4.25 rating on Goodreads which is fairly high for Goodreads uh, and I feel like a lot of people did enjoy this one I don't know guys I don't know I just didn't not a bad book that's the thing it's not a bad book um, it's well written it's got a lot of like I said that those heart touching moments and a lot of nice um, like cultural things as well with the black cake that's introduced in here but again it just it felt like just we were just jumping from thing to thing they started introducing way too many characters which I was just like I, I can't and yeah so I skipped and just kind of read the ending but yeah, I'm gonna count it as read because I did read the majority of this book I just skipped a couple different chapters which I know is not good. I should have just DNF'd it and saved myself the trouble. But yeah, that one I gave a two star. And the reason I gave it two stars is because I did enjoy the first part of the book. Um, I did like where it was going. But again, it just, it was boring. So there you go, you guys. That is my, um, what I read in February. I am currently reading this book from the library the handmaid's tale i'm not very far into it i wanted to finish this in february so bad this was one of my ones on my tbr but it just didn't happen and i've already renewed these books so i'm going to go ahead and finish this one hopefully i'll finish it within the next few days again this one's not a long story in particular but um yeah it is one i'm quite interested to finish reading i've seen the, the tv show um, and then the other books that were on my TBR for February that I did not get to, some of them I will be putting and just, you know, moving them to my March TBR, but some of them I'm going to save for later on in the year and just put them back on my shelf because I own them. So yeah, that's it for this video, you guys. I hope this video is not too long. I feel like I've been talking for a while. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, and I will check you guys out in the next video very, very soon. Stay safe.